I am always astonished when I see people requesting the time of others and receiving the most accommodating response from those they approach. Both sides focus on the object of the request and neither side on time itself. It is requested as if it were nothing, granted as if it were nothing. People trifle with the most precious commodity of all, and it escapes their notice because it's an immaterial thing that doesn't appear to the eyes, and for that reason it is valued very cheaply, or rather it has practically no value at all. People set very great store by annuities and gratuities, and for these they hire out their services, or their efforts, or their attentions. But no one values time. All use it more than lavishly, as if it costs nothing. But if mortal danger threatens them, you'll see the same people clasping their doctor's knees. If they fear a capital charge, you will see them ready to spend all they have to stay alive. So great is the conflict in their feelings. But if each of us could see the number of years before us as precisely as the years that have passed, how alarmed would be those who saw only a few years left, and how carefully would they use them? And yet it's easy to manage an amount, however small, which is clearly defined. We have to be more careful in conserving an amount that may give out at any time. Yet there is no reason to believe that those people are unaware of how precious a commodity time is. They habitually say to those they love most intensely that they are ready to give them some of their own years. And they do give them without knowing it. But they give in such a way that, without adding to the years of their loved ones, they subtract from themselves. But this very point, namely, whether they are depriving themselves, eludes them, and so they can bear the loss of what goes unnoticed in the losing. No one will bring back the years. No one will restore you to your former self. Life will follow the path on which it began, and it will neither reverse nor halt its course. It will cause no commotion at all. It will call no attention to its own swiftness. It will glide on in silence. It will prolong itself at neither a king's command nor his people's clamour. It will run on just as it started out on the first day with no diversions and no delays. And the outcome? You've been preoccupied while life hurries on. And death looms all the while. And like it or not, you have to accommodate it.